So who else remembers that time that Tumblr created an entirely fictional ancient Greek goddess and convinced the internet that she was from ancient Greece? I can't be the only person. So if you, like me, were on Tumblr in the late noughties, early 2010s, then you may have come across the modern day myth of Mesperian. It all started with a simple Tumblr post asking which Greek goddess was known as the most beautiful in ancient Greek mythology, which naturally descended in to people speculating as to who they would answer if this question was put to them in antiquity, a little bit like it is to Paris in the myth of the golden apple and Paris's judgement between the three goddesses Aphrodite, Athena and Hera. The joke being that in picking Aphrodite, Paris was responsible for launching a <laughs> 10 year war between the Trojans and the Greeks, so it's not a question you should take lightly is what Tumblr suggests and that is fair enough. Now all of the natural contenders came up, we had Aphrodite, we had Hera, we had Athena, we even had Persephone, until one user suggested an entirely new name to the list, which was Mesperian. And allow me to read for you exactly what that user posted. Another tip, name Mesperian. Not only will you shock everyone, including her, since Aphrodite was a jealous hoe who burnt half her face off, but you'll win Hades' favour. As his most beloved daughter, anything that praises her will make you a kind human to her, an okay human to him and a genuinely good person to anyone else, with responses including, I heartily endorse this alternative answer. The big plot twist, however, is that Mesperian never existed. She was not an ancient Greek goddess and she is actually the creation of a teenager's fan fiction online. And in this video, I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into how Mesperian took over the internet and convinced everyone she was real, whilst also talking a little bit more about the myths that may have inspired her, including the real children of Hades and Persephone, and the ancient Greek goddesses who would have dealt in areas like punishment that Mesperian had attributed to her. So although this incident stands out because a entire goddess sprung up out of a misunderstanding and a very understandable one at that. It's not the only time that Tumblr has spread misinformation about Greek mythology. There is what I like to think of as an entire like underground pseudo mythology of Tumblr where people very understandably go around <laughs> stating things about Greek mythology as though they are fact without citing any original sources and then those things get reblogged, repeated and turned into modern day misconceptions around antiquity. For example, Tumblr has actually been one of the sort of biggest exponents of the theory <laughs> that Athena actually rewarded or helped Medusa by turning her in to a monster who could turn people to stone. And you may have previously seen on this channel that I did an entire video essay dedicated to the topic of Medusa. So if you'd like to hear more about the development of her story in antiquity and modern pop culture, go and check that video out. One thing I will note here for the second time is that there's no ancient evidence that Athena was doing Medusa a favour. When Athena does crop up in Medusa's myths, which is only once or twice, she is very much painted as an antagonist. And although I can't pinpoint an origin to this misconception, it really has a bit of a stranglehold on Tumblr and the internet as a whole. You get posts including the ones on the screen right now where Athena's hands are described as tied, that she was a powerful goddess, but in order to remain part of the boys club, she had to play the game a certain way. According to this user, because she couldn't punish Poseidon, she had to punish Medusa, but she wanted to find a way other than to outright kill her, so using her cunning brain came up with something that would actually protect her from men in the future. And this idea has even rolled into a theory that Medusa's image was used to signify women's shelters and safe houses in antiquity, so if you saw Medusa's face on a building, then you would know this was a safe space for women. But there's no ancient evidence of this. This is something that entirely stems from one person's reading of the myths that don't necessarily have any like tangible proof in the ancient evidence. Now, of course, 
myths are malleable and open to interpretation. But that argument gets flung around a lot online to defend complete fictions around mythology and it's one thing to say that you like to imagine a myth one way and another thing to suggest that there is ancient evidence for that version of a myth existing or that interpretation of a myth existing among ancient people which this just doesn't. Similarly you get the whole Persephone went to the underworld willingly and that's the original version of the story that she chose to eat the pomegranate and she was trying to escape a overbearing mother, which again does not concur with any of the ancient evidence and it's not just the idea that people have decided to write new versions of a myth of Hades and Persephone where this happens, it's the fact that you find posts on Tumblr where people are arguing this is the original version without providing any citations but you know, the historian in me loves a good citation. I will, however, be doing a whole video on the reasons why Hades and Persephone are not the cute couple you think they are in the future. So bear with me on that. And in the meantime, let's get back to Miss Spirion. So like I mentioned, the idea that Mysperion was a real goddess seemed to kind of branch out from this first Tumblr reply in which somebody spoke of her as if she was. And it's very likely that this Tumblr user simply read about Miss Birion online and took for granted that she was real. And where she would have read about Miss Birion was actually in a short story written by a teenager and posted to the website Booksy. So this story is entitled Miss Birion, Goddess of Torture and Punishment. And you can still read it online. It was posted in 2009 by a user who since came out and reiterated the fact that she made up this goddess. It was never meant to be read as a real ancient myth. But in this short story, Mysperion is essentially born from Hades' imagination. When Persephone is above ground in the land of the living, he misses her so much that he starts to imagine they had a child together until this child comes to life and it's Mysperion. Now Mysperion, according to this story, was so beautiful that Aphrodite grew jealous of her and decided to punish the younger goddess for going near her territory, although realistically all of the Greek goddesses are depicted as beautiful, whatever that means. Aphrodite then effectively goes on to play an incredibly cruel trick on Miss Virion that leads her to have severe burns on one side of her face. Now Aphrodite, like all the gods, does like to punish <laughs> women who sort of challenge their areas of expertise, but it's usually mortals. So for example, in the myth of Psyche and Cupid, Aphrodite or Venus in this incident punishes the girl for being considered as beautiful as the goddess herself. Because Mysperion is a goddess though and not a mortal, she doesn't exactly back down from a fight in this story and turns into the goddess of torture and punishment. By the end of the story she's depicted as flying around the world in search of people who deserve to be punished and this is the origin story of the modern day goddess that is Mysperion. Now it very much seems as though this story was written in good faith. It was never intended to fool people into thinking that Miss Spirion was a real goddess and like I mentioned the original author actually left a comment on this post a few years later when she realised what had happened but was no longer able to access her account to take the story down. So let me read what the original writer said. This story belongs to me, Sarah, Renee Rombold. Unfortunately, I lost the ability to sign into this account and Booksy will not respond to my emails. You can find me pretty easily on LinkedIn if you have questions slash concerns. The story is completely fictional. These pieces were from when I was 14, maybe 15 years old in about 2007, but were not posted here until 2009. They were part of my English honours course as a freshman in high school. I apologise for the numerous grammatical errors in these. Back then, I only had dial-up via AOL and a parental time restriction of an hour online. So I had to type really fast once I was able to have the pages load. I'm glad to see that many individuals enjoyed this piece and were inspired. However, I didn't think so many would confuse fiction as part of actual mythology. I love that we actually get Sarah's response to this because it must be such a surreal experience to have written a short story as a teenager, posted it online, probably not even expecting it to get much traction at all, like a lot of us did back in the noughties, and for it to completely, like, spiral into this modern day myth, which is, like I said, so surreal. So 
It's really cool that we got Sarah's response there. And it really does seem as if the original Tumblr user who posted about Miss Spirian as her answer to the most beautiful goddess was simply just mistaken from having read these stories online, which is like I mentioned, entirely understandable. But like the internet is wont to do, it went with it, it rolled with it, and people just started repeating this all over Tumblr. People were talking about Miss Spirian, they were elaborating on her story and theorising about her as if she was a real goddess of antiquity that the ancient Greeks believed in. And although a lot of debunking has gone on around Miss Spirian since then, it's also become a bit of an in-joke with Tumblr users and mythology nerds online, you can still see the remnants of that confusion when you look up Miss Spirian. There are countless posts on Reddit, Quora and Tumblr of people asking if Miss Spirian is a real goddess or for sources for the goddess Miss Spirian, despite the fact that she never existed outside of this short story. There is fan art of Miss Spirian and there's actually subsequent fan fiction of this goddess across sites like Wattpad that have been inspired by this original story, whether they realised it was fictional or thought it was based on a goddess itself. And it's genuinely so fascinating to me as both an ancient historian and somebody who has been an avid user of um, the internet for information since I was a kid and was growing up on Tumblr in the noughties to sort of see how easily these kind of things can happen. And I see history repeating itself now on places like TikTok, to be honest. I see people post comments and entire videos about mythology and gods and goddesses from all around the world, not just Greek and Roman mythology, stating things as though they are facts without giving any sources that actually haven't got any, that really aren't based in anything, but have been read, say, on a like top 10 fun facts about mythology post online by somebody who sat there and probably made all of those facts up. So Mesperian is in no way a one-off or a fluke. It's part of something a lot bigger. It's an example of the easiness with which pseudo-mythology can spread through the internet. And it's of course another reason why you shouldn't just believe everything you hear in videos or in posts that haven't given any sources. You probably know that at this point, but it, it's worth repeating. <laughs> oh my god, I After hearing a little bit about Miss Spirion and how she came to be, however, you may be interested in who the real children of Hades and Persephone were. Well, in Greek mythology, there aren't often children that are attributed to both Hades and Persephone. Although they did rule the underworld together and were husband and wife, the few children that are attributed to either Hades or Persephone they usually have separately, they don't have with one another. So for example, we have Zagreus, who is the god of the Orphic Mysteries, a mystery cult around Orpheus in ancient Greece that we really don't know much about because it was a mystery cult. And mystery cults did not go around publishing much information. They were very insular and they kept themselves to themselves. But Zagreus was supposedly the son of Persephone by Zeus, who is also her father, and he's conceived when Zeus sexually assaults Persephone in the guise of a serpent. Similarly, we have Melino, who is also a result of a sexual assault by Zeus of Persephone, but this time in the guise of Hades. So in both incidents, Zeus disguises himself and impregnates Persephone. Melino, meanwhile, is a goddess of the underworld who, again, we only really see referenced in the few Orphic hymns that we have. So these are pretty niche gods and goddesses to be perfectly honest when it comes to the children of Persephone or Hades. We also see within the same Orphic hymns a few references that may suggest that the Furies were believed by followers of um, the Orphic mysteries to be the children of Hades and Persephone or Persephone and Zeus. But again, it is worth noting that the Orphic mysteries and therefore the Orphic hymns are pretty niche and they're not necessarily the mainstream beliefs of most ancient Greeks. The Furies, however, may have played a part in inspiring 
the myth of Mesperion and they certainly could be drawn on as a comparable group of goddesses. So the Eumenides are three goddesses who specifically dealt in vengeance and retribution. In fact, one of the most famous incidents involving the Eumenides, who are sometimes known as the Furies in Greek mythology, is their attempt to punish Orestes for murdering his mother. So Orestes murders his mother Clytemnestra because she in turn had murdered his father Agamemnon and the Eumenides essentially hunt him down um, because he deserves to be punished for committing matricide. There is then this whole Greek court scene that unravels in which Athena oversees this trial and Orestes ends up being acquitted for the murder of Clytemnestra because she also murdered his father. It's it's a long and winding story, but if you would like to read more about it, then there are some fantastic ancient Greek plays that I will link in the description box down below. So you certainly do see goddesses of punishment and revenge in Greek mythology, although not quite as literal as torture like with um, Mesperian. But this is not only seen in the Eumenides but in the goddess Nemesis who is a goddess of retribution and specifically punishes those who commit hubris which is a big deal in ancient Greece. Like do not underestimate the importance of hubris or the importance of not committing hubris in ancient Greece. So yes that is basically the story of how Tumblr created a goddess and how she took the internet by storm and convinced countless people that she was real, all potentially through a simple misunderstanding, which I think is fascinating. Hopefully you have enjoyed coming along on this pseudo mythological journey with me and maybe you've even learned a few fun facts about ancient Greece and ancient Greek mythologies themselves. I would love to hear if you were familiar with Mesperian before this video and also maybe what some of your favourite misconceptions about ancient Greek and Roman mythology are or any mythology really that you've come across online. If you're curious about some more common misconceptions about ancient Greek civilization, not necessarily Tumblr pseudo myths, and you can also check out my video on my top three misconceptions about ancient Greek history, which will be linked in the description box down below along with my video essay on Medusa. As always, thank you so much for watching these videos. There will be a million links down below to help you learn more, as well as my Patreon if you'd like to vote on future video essays and help me decide what to tackle next. But until next time, happy learning and I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone.